Blackman Parish Council meeting is now called to order. No, November 14th at 2.30 p.m. We have roll call. Machines are open. Let the reflection show that eight council members are present. Mr. Black is absent. We'll move to item 9V. A resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of not to exceed $16 million of revenue refunding bonds of the Parish of Plaquemine, State of Louisiana, prescribing the form, terms, and conditions of such bonds and providing for the payment thereof, providing for the sale of such bonds, authorizing an agreement with the paying agent, and providing other matters in connection therewith. We are offered with with filling in the blanks. Line four, eleven million eight hundred and fifty thousand. On page six. And also the date will be April 1st, 2009. I so often. Is there any questions or comments from the audience? I mean from the board? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask uh, the team of you, Martin, to come up and just give us a, a brief, brief explanation, Mr. Martin. Double brief. Double brief. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Mr. Lee Bressler with the underwriters has prepared a little analysis. My very brief, brief shot is you have two outstanding bond issues, sales tax issues, uh, which can be refunded. By refunding them, you issue new bonds at a lower interest rate than you're paying now, and the money from the new bonds pays off the old ones. So you wind up, just like you do at your house when you refinance, you lower the amount of money you pay each month and you achieve a saving. The details Mr. Bressler has got can give you for you. Thank you. Very brief. All right, I'll be double quick as well, but I uh, just wanted to go over some information with you all. Uh, the S&P Global Ratings Direct Report is your rating report. This is your report card, and you all received an A rating which is a very attractive rating, which will provide a, a very low interest rate for you when you sell your bonds. But it's a, you should read the report. It gives you a good status of how the market views you all from, from a financial standpoint. If you flip through the book that I gave you on page uh, four, this just shows where interest rates are right now and why it's an attractive time for you all to issue refunding bonds. Uh, this chart shows that 98% of the time since 1993, rates have been higher. So. You're in very good territory where only it's been lower 2% of the time over that period of time. As um, Mr. Martin mentioned, we're looking at three different of your <coughs> issues to be refunded, the 2010As, the 2010Bs, as well as the 2009s. If you flip to page 7, uh, there's a couple of interesting things. One is we identified that the reserve fund was overfunded by about $500,000. So we could have either used that to reduce the interest rate on the new bonds, or we could have provided that to you all for uh, use in your capital budget. And the request from finance was to go ahead and release that money and have you all have that available for your capital budget. I think those funds have already been spent. 
Uh, so there's 500000 coming in. That's your money. It's not savings, but we've gone from restricted to unrestricted for that particular amount of money. If you look at the right-hand column, you'll also see that there's estimated gross savings of $2.296 million. Now, of that, um, there's 500, another 500000 of reserve funds that we're able to release. So that helps you from a cash flow standpoint, but again, that's not savings. So our gross estimated savings is about $1,787,000. And then if you present value that back to today, it comes up to about a million five. And we look at that as a percentage of the bonds that we're refunding, and it's over almost 9%, it's over 8% present value savings. And if you look at the next page, this is how the Bond Commission looks at it. They say anything around 3% is okay, anything about 5% is great, and you're at 8%. So that's well above the, the, the standards that <coughs> they're set. And if you look on page nine, you'll see that the savings, as I mentioned, the the uh, two million three um, uh, savings uh, ends up being about two hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year for the life of the issue. On page ten is the estimated transaction costs. We have those detailed by item, and uh, the total is about two hundred eight thousand, which is about one point four seven of of percent of the bonds. And then on the next page, we show that um, in addition to getting an A rating, we also have interest from one of the double A rated bond insurers to credit enhance your bonds, and the rate that they are going to charge on that is very cost effective. So this will save another $50,000 by using bond insurance. And then finally, on the interest rates on the bonds, this is the biggest item that determines your savings is where we can sell the bonds and where the interest rates are going to be. And it will be a 100% transparent process. Um, I know Mr. Surpass and others, um, perhaps Mr. Lapine, will be looking at their computers and watching the order flow as we sell the bonds, and you all are welcome to do as well. We can get you all sign in names if you want to see. There will be a report that's shown on page, like on page 13, which shows for each maturity of the bonds how many orders we received, how many bonds we're trying to sell, and that will explain if there's any adjustment in yields or why there should be adjustment in yields. If we oversell the issue, we should, we're going to try to reduce the yields. And so we'll be able to, everybody will be able to see that, and that will all be um, transparent. And then on page 14 is the timetable. We're here to sort of ask permission to proceed. We're ready to go now. We've got the rating. We've got the bond insurance. We've got the offering document ready. Uh, we can release that, um, you know, once we get the approval. We want you all to adopt the parameter sale. Uh, and then we're scheduled to sell the bonds the first week after Thanksgiving. We're sort of, Thanksgiving week is not a good week to sell bonds. It's uh, just too short of a week, and a lot of investors are, are taking vacation. So we would come back the week uh, of December 2nd. We'd come back here on the 12th and give you a full report on the sale, who bought the bonds, how many orders, uh, how many buyers, and, and interest rates, and that type of thing, and actual savings. These are just projected savings that we have. And then uh, the bond delivery will be at the offices of Foley Udell on January the 9th. And we can talk some more about that uh, when we come back on December 12th. So I know that was quick, as instructed, but I wanted to uh, give you this information. To, to summarize it, we're, uh, by refunding these bonds, we are going to save approximately 250000 a year in bond payments for how long? Correct. Uh, let me grab that schedule. And we're not extending the debt in time. You're not extending the debt, and those transaction costs that I mentioned are netted out of those savings. So those right. are net savings after the transaction costs. All right. So uh, I think that's important for everyone to understand that this is a, a tremendous savings for us in a time of financial strength, <coughs> and that the, the fact that we can save that kind of money, it's um, proven that we made a good decision by going in this direction. Thank the administration for working with us and allowing us to, uh, to put your firm to work to go ahead and save us that type of money. Did you, yeah, did you say that 250 was a yearly savings for us, or one-time savings? Correct. Yearly. Yearly. Annually, yes. If you look on page nine, you can see uh, every year the, uh, I think it's the first year there's not savings, but in calendar year 2021, it starts at 267, and then it, the total is about 2296000 and that's cash flow savings, and I guess if you divide that by 10, then that would be the 229000 that you mentioned. Is there any more questions from the table? Any questions or comments from the audience? I want to thank you, Mr. Martin and Mr. Bressler, for giving us that report. The machines are open.
and item pass 8 0. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for moving us up. We'll move to item 9 H. Mm -hmm. Happy, happy, happy. A resolution to provide employees group insurance coverages consisting of medical, vision, and dental in life for the policy period January 1, 2020 through December 31st, 2020 on an employer-employee contributory basis of 72.28% and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Uh, Mr. Russo, you have a motion? Well, uh, yeah, what, what, show me the item. I think this is under Councilman Black's name. Mm. Yeah. 9H. 9H. So who's moving? You're moving. Mr. Russo. Okay. Yeah, the most recent one. I think we have some blanks in the uh, the resolution. I'm going to distribute. Mm -hmm. I'm going to distribute the uh, fill in the blank sheets. Another one. One more for me. Mm -hmm. With uh, with the filling in of the blanks, I'll offer it on behalf of Councilmember Black. Ask for a second. Second. Second with Councilman Conovich. And at this time, uh, I'm going to ask the uh, Mr. Insardi and Mr. Fasane to come forward and make a brief presentation. Could you please state your name and address? Danica Ann Sorty, 275 Riverbend Drive, Bell Chase. Yes, sir. We um, had an increase with Blue Cross this year on our existing coverage of 17.90% was the renewal. We've had over close to $5 million in claims this year, so it was an unhealthy year for Plaquemines Parish government. We shopped the market. We got a rejection letter from Cigna declining to vote, was not interested in, in giving us some numbers. Humana came back also with some uncompetitive rates. We had United, they came back with uh, a very uh, interesting and very good plan that they had on coverages, as well as some alternatives with Blue Cross. We spent some time over this last month speaking with administration extensively, as well as council members, and we've also uh, met with a contingent from the employee base to survey the employees that had various coverages, people who represented coverages on the HMO plan, the PPO plan, as well as the Blue Saver plan. We presented to them in spreadsheet fashion all the numbers that we presented to council and to administration of all the different quotes and plans that were received throughout this process of shopping the market. And it was the unanimous, without hesitation, opinion of those that we surveyed in this particular meeting that they would want to stay with their current Blue Cross plan and endure the additional cost. In doing so, the average employee, uh, one uh, single coverage person, that would represent a, um, an extra $12 per paycheck in premium. We have over 400 people in the HMO, so this is the HMO coverage. For employee plus one, an extra $24 per pay period, and for employee with family, an extra $35 pay per pay period. With this increase in maintaining the coverage that apparently the employees appreciate and enjoy. As far as uh, differences in the cost to the budget for the parish, that would be an additional $647,620 from a budgetary standpoint by maintaining what we have. 640? 
Mr. Mr. Chairman? Dr. Gouy? Uh, I think it's very important, and you mentioned it earlier, but just to emphasize mm -hmm. that this increase is based on claims made. It has nothing to do with the market, the global market, the national market, nothing. It has to do with claims made. And as you said, we had a very difficult year last year with the number of claims made, and it was five million, I think. Right. Yeah. The numbers are the numbers. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the year before, we didn't have to experience that. We were pretty level with the board. So it's important for the employees to understand that we're looking for what they like. Absolutely. The insurance that they like, mm -hmm. the doctors that they have, the pharmacy plans that they have to maintain that, and because they're very happy with that from all the surveys that we've done and the people we've spoken to. We have some things have no control over, and the claims made has resulted in a necessary increase if they want to keep the same policy. Exactly. Is there any more questions from the table? No, I just have a comment. I want to thank you all for your hard work in putting this together. I encourage our employees to uh, join the, the Y because they got a free membership to make them healthier, so next year our claims won't be as high. And uh, I know that y'all have been through a lot of meetings with a lot of uh, time spent on this. And thank you for working with uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield to get us the least rate increase that we could possibly get. Thank you for the opportunity. I got to thank you for your presentation. And one more question from the table. Oh. Mr. Mr. President. I also want to thank you guys for your due diligence. Um, we did meet several times, went back and forth, um, crunched the numbers. And again, Dr. Gooey was uh, right on point. It's, it's not, it's effective because of the high, several high claims, not just it, it's uh, now next year, we'll have to see what happens and hope that some of those claims fall down. Maybe that will decrease some of this policy. But uh, I do uh, appreciate your due diligence. Um, from day one, our recommendation from the administration was to move on the same uh, insurance that we had. We knew that we would have to take a, a big hit on uh, financially, but it's what we can allow to our employees. Uh, we do, don't allow, we, we can't uh, have big numbers of salaries. Uh, so these are things that we can offer to our, uh, our workforce. Well, uh, we did take Dr. Gooey's recommendation and meeting with some of our employees, and it was a unanimous decision. They didn't mind going up as long as they got good service. Uh, so, again, this recommendation from the administration to the council is to please pa pass the plan that you have in front of you. Thank you. And the employees that we meet with and throughout the whole parish, they do appreciate it so. They understand that that's, you know, financial challenges for the parish, and they do appreciate the benefits that you provide them. Any more questions from the table? Audience? But before we leave, I just would like to uh, thank you all for um, giving us an opportunity to work with you. Uh, and I wanted to introduce the uh, Director of Sales for Blue Cross. He's worked very closely with us throughout this whole period and has been a real big help to do what we were able to put together for you. This could you, is Dan could you, Wagner. Could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Dan Wagner, Director of Sales for the New Orleans area. I just wanted to come down and say, you know, we, we appreciate your business. We enjoy working with you. We'll do everything we can. We constantly work on the health and wellness of employees, trying to get them healthy. We know utilization kind of drives all, all, all premium increases. So I just wanted to come by and say hi, and, uh, you know, thank you for being a client. Thanks. Mr. Bartholomew? Yes, I just want to recognize that Mr. Wayne was saying he outstanding and Miss Insardi as well. Uh, they always had the interest of Plaquemine Parish uh, employees. And so that's very supportive and it's not about the money, it's about what they can do to make it better. So I really appreciate y'all attitude and working with us, getting it done. And also to find that man with the money on the other hand to give y'all a raise on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Blank? Oh, just thank y'all very much for working on this. I guess a slightly better rate than we originally were offered. Ms. Newberry? Uh, Mr. Wayne, Ms. Danica, thank you very much for trying to find the extra percentage uh, savings for the parish. <coughs> Any more questions from the table? Audience? Seeing none. Machine open.
And the measure passed 8 0. Thank you. We move to item two, executive session. Plaquemines 2A, Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District versus Plaquemines Parish Council, 25th JDC, case number 65 218, Division A, Attorney Danny Garrett, Councilmember Roussel. B. Tammy Bradley versus Platinum Parish Government, Civil Service Docket Number 19-001, Attorney Rennie S. Burris, the second, Councilmember LaFrance. C. Venice Dredging Project Bertuzzi Contracting Company LLC, Crosby Dredging LLC, and any other parties necessary to force project completion, seek monetary damages, and any other legal remedies permitted under law. Attorney Jacques Tuzet, Councilmember Cognovich. D, re receive attorney-client privilege communications relative to the parish's class Halliburton Transocean claim under LRS 42 colon 17A10, Council Member LaFrance. I so offered. Second. Seconded by Mr. Conovich. Machines are open. The measure passed 8-0. We'll go into executive session at at 2.50 p.m. We will return from executive session. So I offered time is 3.24. Need a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Conovich. Coming out of executive session. We don't usually vote on that. Oh, y'all don't? No. Okay. All right. Does he have to withdraw it? Redraw the second. Redraw. No final decision or binding decision was made in executive session. We are moved to approval of the agenda. Key in if you have any withdrawal or any deferral. Ready. Oh, yeah. Ms. Newberry. Yes, I'm withdrawing 9D. Yeah, dog 9D. 9D. Withdraw. A D is in dog. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Bartholomew. E and L deferred. E and L. Yes. Yeah. Uh, e gonna fall off. Mr. Russo. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to defer 9T at this time. I didn't get T. 9E and L. There it is. That's 9E here, Mr. LaFrance. Yes. 9E and L. Okay. We have 9B deferred. 9C deferred, 9D withdrawn, 9E deferred, 9G deferred, 9T deferred, 10D deferred, and 10E deferred. 9L. Okay. Mm -hmm. 9L deferred. Mm -hmm. We'll go over it again. 9B as in boy. 9C as in cat. Withdrawn. 9D deferred. 9E. 9G, 9L, 9T, 10D, as in dog, and 10E.
We'll move to item 9A1. An ordinance establishing an industrial development impact fee in the parish of Plaquemines and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Mr. Conovich offered. Offer with changes. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Russo. Mr. Goy. Mr. Conovich. I'll defer to Mr. Buras. <clears throat> This is the uh, industrial development impact fee ordinance that was introduced um, several meetings ago, um, and just for the audience, and just for the audience members, I put um, the most recent draft of the amendments or, or the offer with changes up here on the uh, on the side. The ordinance um, did not really. Um, uh, the fee itself didn't change what actually what what the amendments mostly what they do or the changes what they do is mostly actually restrict the government more on its use of these funds and as we previously discussed in the budget hearings um, uh, these fees have to uh, they have to have a nexus to the development and the facility itself and it has to be roughly proportionally um, uh, expensed on the facilities uh, impact on those um, parish infrastructure um, in, in, in uh, parish facilities. So um, I've, I've you know, gotten a couple phone calls and had a couple discussions with some council members about uh, concerns uh, members of the community had and people who currently own property in an I-1, I-2, I-3, or any industrial activity uh, that's permitted in a floodplain. And so I just want to clarify a few things. Uh, first, uh, if you look on B, uh, the industrial development impact fee shall only be assessed on uh, it's it's all industrial development constructed or developed after November 14th, which is obviously today, 2019, for any industrial activity restricted to the I3, I2, um, I1, and in, in, in floodplain. And so, um, all existing industrial infrastructure, or what I'm calling uh, industrial development, that currently exists in the parish. Uh, will not have to pay this fee. Only new development um, moving forward. Um, I think uh, C is very important about what this includes and what it doesn't include. So I'll actually read the whole thing so that uh, it's clear. And it says the industrial development impact fee shall not be assessed on undeveloped land, borough pits regulated by Chapter 5, Article 5 of the Parish Code of Ordinances, all pipeline infrastructure located off the industrial development's lot of record and repairs within an existing industrial development footprint, except that the industrial development impact fee shall be assessed when a person or entity demolishes any industrial development to construct or develop new industrial development or a person or entity expands their industrial development footprint to include other developed, undeveloped land. And basically what that means is if, if uh, you know, just we'll say you have a petrochemical company and, you know, say they have 100 acres and that's what they do. And all of a sudden that company says, we're no longer going to be in the petrochemical business. We're going to be in the uranium enrichment business. So if they, if they demolish that entire facility and construct a new facility, well, then they would have to pay the impact fee on that new facility. Okay, and then what it also says is if, if you have an existing facility uh, and say you um, demolish three or four tanks or, uh, you know, a major portion of that infrastructure, even a small portion of that infrastructure, you're going to come in and pay the impact fee only on, only on the, uh, which, what's being reconstructed. So if you've got a 100 acre facility and for some reason you're, you need to um, alter 10 uh, 10 acres of that, then you're only going to pay the industrial development impact fee on those 10 acres. Um, and then obviously um, another concern was that uh, some people in the public thought that, well, my entire lot is going to have to pay that fee now. So if you own 100 acres and you only build an industrial uh, facility that um, covers 20 acres, you're not going to pay the fee on the entire 100 acres. You're only going to pay the fee 
on the 10 acres that you actually develop. And only and unless until then you expand that 10 acres to 20 or 30 or 40, only then would you have to pay um, on that in additional acreage. Um, the other important thing about this is um, the funds, uh, and I, I'm going to go ahead and read it because I think it's important. The industrial development impact fees collected by Plaquemines Parish government shall be budgeted and be included in the fund balance designated for infrastructure and only expensed on land use and development plans made necessary by the industrial development and the study, design, and construction of water, wastewater, drainage, transportation, lighting, buildings, recreational public facilities, and other related public facilities and infrastructure that service are, are impacted by the industrial development and its construction. The industrial development impact fee shall not be expensed until after the start of construction of the proposed industrial development. Um, the funds can be refunded. Um, so if, um, and that's E. So industrial development impact fees shall only be refunded when an application for a building or construction permit is voided by written request of the permit applicant or Plaquemines Parish government fails to expense the industrial development impact fee within 10 years. On the original draft, I had its collection, but I think it actually makes more sense to have that 10 years actually start, not at its collection, but after the completion of the construction and development of the industrial development or after collection of the industrial development has, I'm sorry, after collection of the industrial development, in, okay, uh, after, so in other words, once construction's completed, so if a facility takes two years to build, but they pay the fee today, the clock won't start ticking on that 10 years until after, after the two years is up. And lastly, um, uh, the payor can come in and uh, basically certify that the development isn't moving forward and so therefore he would be entitled to a refund and um, and so that's the circumstances in which a refund would be given um, additionally um, we had a criminal uh, it was a criminal clause in here so in other words if you were to violate this ordinance it was criminal penalties i took that out and i made it a civil violation um, I think that's probably more appropriate in this context. Uh, the fine for violating this is a $5,000 uh, civil penalty uh, for each violation occurring each day. And uh, the ordinance uh, empowers the parish president to bring any civil action in the 25th JDC uh, to enforce any civil penalty and enjoin any conduct in violation of this section. So to sum it up, it only applies prospectively. Um, it only applies to new, new parts of a facility or a new facility. Um, and I think that's it, unless you guys have any um, other questions. Mr. Roussel? <clears throat> I don't have any questions. I want to thank you, Lenny, for uh, putting all the work into this and trying to get it to a to a posture that where the uh, the individual industrial developers uh, will understand it a little clearer and make it uh, more attractive for everybody to uh, accept. So thank you for that. Ms. Newberry. Again, Rennie, thank you so much. I know you put a lot of time into this along with uh, Mr. Cognovich. Um, I appreciate your time and effort. So um, just thanks again. I appreciate it. Is there any? More questions from the table? Any questions or comments from the audience? Oh. Could you please state your name? Nicole Williams, 41664 Highway 23. I'm here today um, representing Talker Resources. My manager could not be here. He just asked me to come in front of y'all and ask y'all to defer this item. I wasn't aware that this was on the agenda, nor were we until today with all of the changes, because we're not sure and certain how this is going to affect future development or growth for the industry itself, <coughs> and the changes that were just brought today. So I'm just here asking that you give the business industry, the industrial industry time to review this and see what kind of impact it's gonna have. So they're allowed to come and voice their concerns and opinions in regards to this. 
And Mr. Burris, you stated that it was only for new development, but then you also said that if you replace something, then you would also have to pay the impact fee. So it's not just for new development, correct? You well, can use tanks as an example. So if a tank is torn down and you have to replace that tank in your existing facility, you're still going to have to be subject to these impact fees. Yes. Yeah, so the language is if you demolish, uh, if you demolish existing industrial development, which a tank would be considered, and you come in with a new tank, right? You would pay you you, you would pay the industrial impact fee on that portion of the property on the, on that size of the tank, correct? Okay. Well, that tank, that portion of the property, not the entire development. All right, I, and I understand that, but I, w I was just asked to come here, and I'm just voicing my concern um, via my manager um, so that this can get to our legal department to see how this would impact the future growth of, of our existing facility. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Is uh, Dr. Gouy? Uh, Randy, just one more clarification. Let's go to the tank. The tank's in use for a certain purpose. It has seen its day, has to be replaced, but it's being replaced for the same purpose. Would the impact fee apply to that if the tank is the same purpose as before and there's no additional impact? Yes, it, it doesn't get into... Um purpose. It gets into what's actually, if it's being demolished and it's being repaired, because I think the thinking behind that is the purpose isn't necessarily what's important. It, what's important is when you go to reconstruct that, you have 18 wheelers on the road, that construction activity may require um, surplus water. Um, and so there's a whole host of things that go along with, with when you actually demolish something and reconstruct it. If you're just repairing something, that would not, um, that would not trigger the impact fee. And in a tank, you know, I don't know how large these tanks are, but, um, it's five cents per square foot. So, you know, um, uh, you know, if you're talking about, uh, let's say a, a 15,000 square foot tank, uh, you're talking about uh, paying five cents on that $750 to replace a, a, a 50, what I said, 15,000 square foot tank. So that would be $750. Is there any more question from the table? Mr. Cognovich, you, um, Ms. Williams asked for a deferral. What is your um, call on that? Well, we already deferred it how many times? Four? Three. Three? Yeah, we've, we've deferred it. Uh, well, we didn't have to change it. Quite a number of times. Is there any more question from the table? Audience? Let me, let me ask before we jump on. Mr. Roussel. Uh, because the changes were made, is there any harm in deferring it to the next meeting? Uh, the only reason I say that, I know we got to put it in place by the end of the year. We have one meeting left. And uh, it, I know Targa has uh, a project that's going to be LNG 21 or whatever it is going to be located on their facility. Is that their concern? Right. Well, I, I would go with the wishes of the board, but I, I was just curious to know if there's any harm in delaying it for, um, for two weeks. It's or it's gonna be four weeks. Actually. It's a month. Yeah. yeah. It, it's it's not my recommendation um, that we defer it. Um, I, I will tell you that I um, I went in. The delay was actually um, placing a lot of restrictions on the government. Uh, so, if anything, the delay, the, 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 the broad, what was originally enacted was a lot broader. And so, actually, the scope of this actually shrunk. So, you know, if a, if a member of the public actually looked at what was originally introduced, it actually covered a lot more than what it now covers. And so, with that having been introduced, been published, and having been out 
at least in the public for um, a couple of months now. Um, actually, if anything, this is a much more restricted ordinance uh, than we previously had. Um, I hadn't spoke with Target specifically, but I, I had had other members of the community call me, other interested parties. I had one or two lawyers um, call me to look at drafts and stuff. So um, anyone who uh, contacted the government or contacted my office, I was uh, more than forthcoming with what my thinking was uh, in, in where we were going with this thing. Mr. Blank? I'm sorry, I just... I'm oh, sorry. okay. Is there any more questions or comments from the table? Any more questions or comments from the audience? Machines are open. And the vote is 8-0. We'll move to uh, item 7A8. Venture Global Gator Express application number 2019 770, dated November 8, 2019. Install two 40 inch Venture Global Gator Express pipelines and two associated platforms, Barataria Bay Area. Councilmember LaFrance. So offered. Second. Seconded by Ms. Newberry. Is there any questions or comments from the table? Any questions or comments from the audience? Hearing none, the machines are open. <coughs> and the measure carries. Seven, oh, okay, eight, zero. Okay, thank you, Mr. Goy. We are moved to item seven F. A resolution expressing the Plaquemines Parish Council's support of the construction of a floodgate in Myrtle Grove instead of a wraparound levy. As no, 7F. Seven seven. Oh, what am I on? 7. Oh, sorry. I knew it didn't seem right. Venture Global LNG LLC and Venture Global Gator Express LLC, new business occupancy license to transport and liquefy natural gas for export for export to other markets, 19000 Highway 23, Point Celeste, Louisiana, Councilmember LaFrance. I so offered. Seconded by Mr. Conovich. Any questions from the table? Any questions or comments from the audience? Machines are open. <laughs> and the vote is 8 0. Okay, uh, at this time, we're going to take a five-minute break. We're back to the meeting at 348. We'll move to item 10A3. A resolution confirming the completion of all zoning, construction permits, and business occupancy certificates required by Venture Global Plaquemines LNG LLC and Venture Global Gator Express LLC for their proposed liquefied natural gas export facility and related natural gas pipelines and platform infrastructure in the parish of Plaquemines. All is submitted and described in their construction permit applications and business occupancy certificate application to Plaquemines Parish Government, Parish of Plaquemines, State of Louisiana, Councilmember Bartholomew. All present. 
We have a motion by Mr. Bartholomew, seconded by Mr. Conovich. There's some fill in the blanks that need to be done. Uh oh. Is this a suspension? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Ronnie, you have those? We need to do We are moved to suspension. Right. We have a motion by Mr. Bartholomew, seconded by Mr. Conovich for suspension. Machines are open. And the measure passed is 8 0. <laughs> A resolution confirming the completion of all zoning construction permits and business occupancy certificates required by Venture Global Plaquemines LNG LLC and Venture Global Gator Express LLC for their proposed liquefied natural gas export facility and related natural gas pipelines and platform infrastructure in the parish of Plaquemines. All is submitted and described in their construction permit applications and business occupancy certificate application to Plaquemines Parish Government, Parish of Plaquemines, State of Louisiana, Council Member Bartholomew. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Bartholomew. Oh, okay. And line 63, we're going to fill in those blanks in that order. Okay. On line 30, enter resolution number 19-237. On line 35, resolution number 19-238. On the second page, line 42, ordinance number 19-143. And again, on line number 63, ordinance number 19-143. Off with those changes, Mr. McFarland. So offered by Mr. Bartholomew, seconded by Mr. Conovich. Standing questions or comments from the table? Any questions or comments from the audience? Machines is open. And the measure passes 8-0. We'll move to item 10A1. A resolution authorizing the parish president to initiate and or conduct litigation on behalf of the Plaquemines Parish Government against Bertusi Contracting Company, LLC, Crosby Dredging, Com Dredging, LLC, and any other parties necessary to force project completion, seek monetary damages, and any other legal remedies permitted under law related to the Venice Marina Dredging Project. PPG project number 06-09-03, Council Member Cognovich. We have a motion by Mr. Cognovich. Seconded by Mr. Bartholomew. Just suspend those rules. Machines open. And suspension passes 8-0. A resolution authorizing the parish president to initiate and or conduct litigation on behalf of the Plaquemines Parish Government against Bertusi Contracting Company, LLC, Crosby Dredging, LLC, and any other parties necessary to force project completion, seek monetary damages, and any other legal remedies permitted under law related to the Venice Marina Dredging Project, PPG Project Number 06-09-03, Council Member Cognovich. We have a motion by Mr. Cognovich. Seconded by Mr. Blank. Any questions from the table? Any questions or comments from the audience? Machines are open. And the measure passes 8-0. We'll move to item 10A2. A resolution to direct parish Special Counsel in regard to eligibility determination in the parish's class Halliburton Transocean claim and otherwise provide with respect thereto. 
So off for now. Moving for suspension. Such about Mr. Conovic. For suspension. And the measure passes 8 0. A resolution to direct parish special, special counsel in regard to the eligibility determination of the parish's class Halliburton Transocean claim and otherwise provide with respect thereto. On line 21, cross out except. On line 25, cross out except. And not so often. Seconded by Mr. Roussel. Is there any questions or comments from the table? Any questions or comments from the audience? Machines are open. And the measure passes seven with one extension, Mr. Conovich. We have a motion by Mr. Congress to suspend the rules. Second. Seconded by Mr. Blank to suspend the rules. Yes. A resolution officially naming the provision located at Bell Chase Government Complex 333 F Edward A. Bear Boulevard to the coach Amos Cormier Jr. Multi Purpose Center. Offer. We have a motion by Mr. Conovich. Second. Second by Mr. Blank to suspend the rules. Like to introduce. Hold on. Don't leave the past. <coughs> don't want the past to fail. Mr. Convict, your method failed. Okay, we'll move to item four, Mr. President, status report. Thank you, Mr. Lebrant. Uh, just a few things. Uh, tomorrow, November the 15th at 9 a.m., the Plaquemines Parish Government will conduct a ceremony grand opening of the ribbon cutting of the Government Complex Multipurpose Center. We look forward to seeing everyone there. As we move into the holiday season, we are proud to announce a series of Christmas tree lightings throughout our parish will start up again. Starting Monday, December 2nd, at Port Sulphur Government Complex at 6 p.m., we'll have a, a tree lighting. Uh, Tuesday, December 3rd, at the Parish Courthouse right here at 6 p.m., we'll have a tree lighting. And Wednesday, December 4th, at Bell Chase Library at 6 p.m., we'll have a tree lighting. So we look forward to getting with all you guys. Um, we're excited to bring that tradition back to our parish and more details to follow. Uh, 
First of all, I'd like to thank uh, a wish. Good luck to uh, South Plaquemine High's football team as they take on Lakeside at home tomorrow. And Bell Chase High School will take on Huntington at home. So good luck to both of those high school teams. And a personal note, I want to thank each and one of you guys for your um, utmost respect on doing the um, budget hearings and uh, your your due diligence, but most of all, just your respect, and I, I truly appreciate it. So thank you, guys. Thank you for your report, Mr. President. For a update by charter directors. I think the um, the reports were given out every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to call the directors. Thank you all for that. Appreciate it. Next item. Bids and advertisements. We have two. 5A, a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to advertise for and dispose of surplus vehicles and equipment on an as-is basis through public auction conducted by Henderson Auctions and otherwise provide with respect thereto. I so offered. Second. Seconded by Mr. Conovich. Any questions or comments from the uh, table? Audience? Machines are open. And the measure passes 8-0. B, a resolution authorizing the acceptance of bids for furnishing recreation equipment and uniforms for one year for use by the Recreation Department and otherwise provide with respect thereto. I so offered. Second. Seconded by Mr. Conovich. Any questions or comments from the table? Audience? Machines are open. Hmm? Oh, Mr. Black, I'm sorry, I didn't see. Sure. Is there going to be a deposit for these uniforms next year so we could recover some of these, these costs for this, so the uniforms to actually come back to the Recreation Department? No, it's a it, is there going to be a deposit on the uniforms so, so we can get these costs back at the end of the year so that we could use the uniforms again the following year? Um, we'll talk about that with Recreation and see if that's a good policy. Sure. Thank okay. you. Any more questions or comments from the table? Audience, machines are open. And the measure passes 8 0. Number six, beer and liquor licenses. Two in if you have any beer and liquor licenses. Everybody. Yeah. Mr. Conovitz. Hearts <laughs> Old Cypress Bar, LLC, 42815, Highway 23. JKNA, LLC, 27910, Highway 23. Morris Hart, 42813, Highway 23. Lucky Food Store, 111 Crane Drive, Suite A. Phyllisack of Jesuit Bend. 113 Line Club Lane, Black Velvet Boy Grill, 105 Everard Lane, Happy Land, 35949 Highway 11, Bayou Club Bar and Grill, 42866 Highway 23, Lucky Ryan, 109 Rody Lane, Changes Restaurant, 42939 Highway 23. That's it. Mr. Roussel. Yes, I have um, Dave's Beverage. It's The company name is ASVG and Associates Incorporated at 7690 Highway 23, Liquor Class B for Renewal. And I have Salvos LLC doing business at Salvos at 7742 Highway 23, Bell Chase. Class A liquor for renewal. Mr. Albro. I have New Orleans Original Daiquiris, 8102 Highway 23 for renewal. 
Cody B's The Market, 8134 Highway 23 for Class A Renewal. Belchase Fuel Mart at 8180 Belchase Highway, Class B uh, package renewal. And Belchase Express at 7812 Highway 23 for our Class B package. Is it? Ms. Newberry. Yes, I have a, a 2020 renewal alcohol license for Captain Larry's at 11334 Highway 23. That's it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Dr. Gooey. Belche Self Serve. 9654 Highway 23, Belchase. Circle K, number 562. 9144 Highway 23, Belchase. Little G's Cajun Restaurant, 9338A, Highway 23, Belchase. Blue Angel, 9670, Highway 23, Belchase. Mr. Bartholomew. The ferry stop, 3762 Highway 39, Braithwaite, Louisiana. B&B &B Blue Room, 12945 Highway 15, Phoenix, Louisiana. DJ One Stop at P.O. Box, uh, nobody give you that address, P.O. Box 3. 54 Point La Hatch, Louisiana, 16099 Highway 15, Point La Hatch, Louisiana. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Blank. Sure, I have uh, quite a few from my well lubricated into the parish here. <laughs> uh, Gilbo Zinc, uh, 28564 Highway 23, Port Sulphur. Uh, another one for Gilbo's Dilly, uh, Deli, hold uh, at 28564 mm. Highway 23, Port Sulphur. Uh, 10 uh, times 10, located at 33112 Highway 11 in Beerus, DBA at Alex's Lounge. Um, I have one for uh, the Delta Marina, located at 317 Rosemary Drive, Empire, Louisiana, 7050. Another for the uh, Delta Marina, located at 317 Rosemary Drive, Empire. Uh, one for Charles Lenormand Jr., located at 32381A, Highway 23, Beerus. And one for Empire Fuel and Oil, located at 168 Ice House Road in Empire, Louisiana. And just one more for Yaz Station, LLC, uh, DBA Express Food and Fuel, located at 14715 Highway 23 in Belchase, Louisiana. That one for B&H Beverage, 114 Azalea Drive, Port Sulphur. B and C Ventures Incorporated, Myrtle Grove Bar, 17509 Highway 23, Myrtle Grove, Louisiana. <coughs> Gerald and Danette, the G Spot, <laughs> P.O. Box 324, Post South, Louisiana. <laughs> 113. <laughs> hey, hold on, what, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Adam Lane, Post South, Louisiana. So with a G spot? I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. And one for Foster A. Caprell, Woodland Plantation, 21997 Highway 23, Post South Louisiana. I so offer. Second. Second about Mr. Conovich. You have any questions, Mr. Ptolemy? Yeah, where else, please, no. Where's it located? I didn't get the G-spot. Where's the Bury? Let's vote. <laughs> any questions or comments from the audience? <laughs> Machines are open. Oh, man. And the measure passes 8-0. Item seven, we'll take uh, item one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in global.
Okay, what about nine? Oh, nine. We're not including that? Oh, okay, nine. Okay. 7A1, Magnolia Terminal LLC application number 2019-577, dated August 20, 2019. Perform eight environmental subsurface borings. Three of the borings will be converted to temporary monitoring wells for groundwater sampling. Councilmember LaFrance. Number two, Environmental Resources Management Application Number 2019-627, dated September 12, 2019. Drill 76 soil borings and 11 groundwater monitoring wells for environmental investigation. Bell Chase Area Council Members Russell and Newberry. Number three, Total American Services Application Number 2019-665, dated September 25, 2019. Drill 40 soil borings for the site investigation. Bell Chase Area Council Members Russell and Newberry. Number four, Wood Environmental and Infrastructure Solutions Application Number 2019-712, dated October 16, 2019. Drill seven, seven soil borings and six monitoring wells. Seven, f 41704 Howie 23, Venice, Council Member Cognovich. Number five, Shell Pipeline Company Application Number 2019-732, dated October 23, 2019. Install temporary matting and facilitate a smart pig launch at the main pass station, main pass area block 80, Council Member Bartholomew. Number six, Venture Global LNG LLC application number 2019-744, dated October 29, 2019. Drill nine geotechnical borings and ex excavate 12 test piles, pits for Venture Global Plaquemines LNG Point Celeste Area Council Member LaFrance. Number seven, Globe, Venture Global LNG LLC application number 2019-745, dated October 29, 2019. Drill 82 geotechnical borings, eight cone penetration tests, nine seismic cone penetration tests, and five marine geotechnical borings for Venture Global Delta LNG, Point Celeste Area Council Member LaFrance. And number nine, Pioneer Resources USA, Inc., application number 2019-664, Dated September 25th, 2019. Drill 14 soil borings for site, in, it, site investigation. Bell Chase Area Council members Roussel and Newberry. We have a motion by Mr. Roussel, seconded by Ms. Second. Newberry. <laughs> Any questions or comments from the table? Any questions or comments from the audience? Machines are open. And the measure passes seven, uh, one extension from Mr. Convich. We are moved to item B, C, and D in Globo. B, Ducks Fireworks, Fireworks Stand Renewal, 7010 Highway 23, Bell Chase, Louisiana, Council Member Resell. C, Ducks Fireworks, Fire Stand Renewal, 9127 Highway 23, Bell Chase, Louisiana, Council Member Gooey. D, Ducks Fireworks, Fireworks Stand Renewal, 9590 Highway 23, Bell Chase, Louisiana, Council Member Gooey. We have a motion by Mr. Gooey, seconded by Mr. Rootsell. Any comments from the table? Audience, machines is open. And the measure passes 8-0. E, Delacro Corporation, new commercial boat sheds in the floodplain zoning district, 1045 Highway 39, Braithwaite, Louisiana, Council Member Bar Bartholomew. We have a motion by Mr. Bartholomew. Seconded by Mr. Blank. Any questions from the table? Audience? Machines is open. And the measure passes 8-0. Introductions <coughs> of resolutions and ordinances. Q and if you have any, Mr. Albro. Resolution to appoint Jeff DeMarco as chairperson and Mr. Victor Cerconi as vice chairperson of the Plaquemines Parish Development Board for a term of two years ending on February 28th, 2022, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. A resolution con conditionally approving a plan of resubdivision of a portion of tract 
3-D-2A of Belchase Plantation, as shown on the Parks of Plaquemines, Phase 3, Phase 3D, being a resolution of a part of Section B, Belchase Plantation, in two lots 172 through 192, lots 234 through 248, Homeowners Association Tract 11H and Streets by Brian Hannon and Associates, certified by Hugh McCurdy III, dated October 16, 2019, without cost to the Plaquemines Parish Government or the Parish of Plaquemines. That's all I have. Mr. Conovich. A resolution officially renaming the pavilion at Belchase Government Complex 333F at A Bay Boulevard to Coach Amos Cormier. Junior Multipurpose Center, the ordinance approving a plan of resubdivision of Track A, Charles E. Columbell, Junior, Division Section 35T20S or 30E, Southeastern Land District of Louisiana, west of the Mississippi River, Bootville, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, into lots A1, A2, and A3. Charles Columbell, Section 35T20S or 30E, Southeastern Land District of Louisiana, west of the Mississippi River, Plaquemines Parish, as shown on the plan and plat of survey of Dufresne Survey and Engineering Incorporated, dated September 19, 2019. The owner have fulfilled all of the requirements of subdivision and resubdivision ordinance of the Plaquemines Parish government and otherwise to provide with respect there too. An ordinance to amend and as amended readopt the Plaquemines Code of Ordinance Section 2-17 Rule for Transaction of Business Before the Council Chapter 1 Meeting of the Plaquemines Parish Council Rule 1 to annul, rescind, and set aside <coughs> Ordinance 13-165 and otherwise to provide with respect there too. A resolution certifying that the urgent need national policy objective is being met under the Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery Program for the Oyster Hatchery Bureau's Boat Harbor Site Mitigation Project. That's all. Mr. Roussel? Yes, I have a resolution authorizing and directing the parish president or his designee to advertise to lease the second floor of the Popich Building at fair market value and otherwise to provide with respect there too. A resolution assigning office space for the Plaquemines Parish Coastal Zone Management Department in buildings 404 and 406 of the Plaquemines Parish Government Complex, otherwise to provide with respect there too, in order to rescind a null and set aside ordinance number 13-86, which authorized the parish president to negotiate and enter into a cooperative endeavor agreement between the Plaquemines Parish Government and the Plaquemines Port Auburn Terminal District for sharing in or use of each other's assets, resources, and personnel to maintain the security and protection of life and property in areas within the jurisdiction of the port of the Plaquemines Parish and otherwise to provide respect there too. And in order to amend the five-year capital improvements plan, ATV off-road park project and otherwise to provide respect there too. Thank you. Mr. Blank. Resolution to appoint a replacement members to the Coastal Zone Advisory Committee and to otherwise and otherwise to provide with respect there too. And I have a substitution for 9A-2, um, an ordinance to amend. Oh, sorry. sorry. That's it. Thank you. I have several. A resolution of the record recognizing the final form and execution of the bond purchase agreement in connection with the insurance and sale of blank Revenue Refunding Bond of the Parish of Plaquemines State of Louisiana Series 2020 of the Parish of Plaquemines State of Louisiana and providing for other matters in connection therewith. An ordinance to amend the five-year capital improvement plan, repair Diamond Park Project, accept donation from Venture Global and ConocoPhillips, and to amend the 2019 operating revenue budget and otherwise to provide with respect there too. A resolution certifying that the urgent need national policy objective is being met under the Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery CDBG-DR program for the South Plaquemine United Fisheries Grand Bayou Dock 
Grand Bayou Boat Dock Project. An ordinance to amend the 2020 manpower structure and operating expenditure budget general fund flood control department and otherwise to provide respect there too. I so offer. Second. Seconded by Ms. Newberry. <laughs> That's just an introduction. Yeah. Right. Right. Nine eight two. Nine eight two. An ordinance to amend in it and amended to readopt section four of ordinance number 142, the comprehensive zoning ordinance of Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, as amended in the comprehensive zoning district map therein adopted by reference in which is paragraph thereto, with reference to application number 2019 415, dated September 3rd, 2019. You offer with the final changes? Certainly. Mr. Blank? For a substitution. We have a second. Second. Second by Mr. Conovich. An ordinance to amend and amended uh, to readopt section four of ordinance. Number 142, the comprehending zoning ordinance of Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana is amended and the comprehensive zoning district map there and adopted by reference and which is paraphrased uh, thereto with reference to application number 2019-415 dated September 3rd, 2019. Have any questions from the table? Um, what am I looking at? Might want to you would like to explain, Mr. Sure, Blake. certainly. So uh, there's an individual that purchased or would like to purchase a, uh, a section of uh, property um, that's located uh, in Empire. It was uh, previously zoned uh, as an industrial uh, site. It was never used as an industrial site, and he would like to go to uh, uh, commercial. Plans to build a home there. What's that? It, this has went through the zoning board and has been approved. Oh, it's gone through the zoning board? Okay. Did you say it went through? I have a question for um, Amitra and Mike. So um, since it's going from an I-1 to a C-2, um, that evidently changes things. So um, can you explain a little bit of the difference to me? Um, the applicant wished to go to the C2 zoning district so he can be able to place his residence at that location. Um, it was prior light, uh, our neighborhood industrial in which residences were not allowed. Right now, the landscaping in the surrounding area is all bushes, you know, forestry. Nothing was ever developed there, and there is no anticipation of any <laughs> industries on that lot or adjacent lots. And we also have a representative of the Sutton family who is here if you all needed any explanations, but there is no intent only to place his residence there. The area around this track, y'all want to change, uh, what is that zone for? Do y'all? Um, industrial. So we're going to have a C2 around an industrial? Yes, ma'am. Is all the property, uh, we talking about the property in Empire, Highway 11, that's and, correct? End of the canal. And I, the, the property extends from Highway 11 uh, to to the back canal, to the, the, the Empire Canal in, oh, on the point. inside of the floodgate, mm -hmm. with the drainage canal separating the two. And, you know, currently, uh, you know, as was mentioned, that the area is overgrown. There hasn't been, there was a home previously on the site in the 1960s. Nothing's really been done. Um, uh, at the time he began this process, he was looking to uh, hurry up and build a house before the flood zones changed so he could build on the ground. Yeah. That is since there's been a delay there. But, I mean, he, he would like to build a residence. He, he is a, um, he, 
He's an employee of Daybrook Fisheries just down the street, so he can be living close to where he works. And, you know, frankly, he's not from the parish. This is a way for us to, you know, make sure somebody could build a house here and, and remain here, that kind of thing. Okay. Is there any question from the table? Any questions or comments from the audience? Please come to the mic. Uh -huh. Please state your name and your address, sir. Blaine Sutton, 130 Deerman Avenue, Long Beach, Mississippi. Um, seems to be some question about the, the land. I'm 50% owner along with my first cousins who are not here today. They're 50% owners. We own the property south of this property. And also my uh, two, well, my aunt and my cousin live next to this property. Uh, the purpose is uh, this gentleman, as mentioned before, that works at Daybrook Fisheries, came to us and inquired about purchasing this property, which is zoned industrial. And for him to run a po uh, power and water utilities to the property, he cannot do that unless it's dropped down to commercial. That way he can put a, a house or build, he plans on building a house on the property. So uh, there will be not, like I say, my cousins are next door. We own the property south of the property, and we also own the property between Highway 11 and the levee. Thank you. Ms. Amitra? Just to elaborate, Mr. Um, Casey is aware that the surrounding properties on side of him will remain as um, light industrial. He is uh, posing to build towards the drainage canal or to that canal um, portion of the land. And he didn't want to uh, request to go to A2 or to an R, which would be um, really out of the ordinary or out of uh, sync with the zoning in that area. So he just asked to downgrade to the next um, lower classification of zoning, which would be commercial. Mr. Roussel? Yeah, Mr. Mitra, would this set a precedent on some spot zoning issues? Can I add one other thing? I was contacted by Philip Simmons, who owns the property to the north of this, and it's a, it's a uh, stretch from Highway 11 to, I think, the 40 Orpent line. And he's interested in doing the same thing, if possible, because his property is useless to him. He can't run power or any utilities on that property since it is zoned industrial. Yeah, I also spoke to Mr. Phillips. Uh, he had contacted me also. Uh, was there any reason why this property was zoned industrial? Pogi plant, bro. There, there was a second pogi plant beyond the first one. Right. The, it was uh, Petro Petro Fisheries, I believe. Um, it's been out of service there for probably 20 years or yep. better. Well, I, I could add a little bit. Before Hurricane Betsy, Bayroy Drilling Fluids owned, or actually didn't own it. They leased it from my grand aunt, great aunt. And it was like a warehouse storage mm -hmm. facility and barge loading facility on the back canal. But since Hurricane Betsy came through and destroyed mm -hmm. the property, they never did rebuild. And it's like uh, Councilman Blink said, it has sat vacant ever since. So, Ms. Newberry? Yeah, it's good to hear that um, maybe this will bring some growth to that area, uh, change in these zones. Um, I, I know that's needed down the road, and um, it shows a presence for the future of what up Empire and the Beers area holds. So, I'll support this. Okay, thank you. Any more questions from the table? Audience? Machines are open. And the measure passes 8-0. Number three, an ordinance approving a plan of resubdivision of the property described as lots 1-C-1-A and 2-C-1-A into lots 1-C-1-A-1 and 2-C-1-A-2 
Section 4, T14S, R12E by Kenneth L. Rembert, Surveyor, dated April 25th, 2019, revised September 23rd, 2019. The owner having fulfilled all the requirements of the subdivision and resubdivision ordinance of the parish of Plaquemines without cost of Plaquemines Parish Government or the parish of Plaquemines and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. We have a motion by Mr. Bartholomew. Second. Seconded by Ms. Newberry. Mr. Bartholomew. Yeah, just the clearing up of the dollar store. That's what it's all about. Dollar store that we had approved. We had to go back and make some adjustment with the zone. Any comments from the table? Audience? Machines are open. The measure passes 8 0. 4. An ordinance requiring lot owners in Myrtle Grove. Defer. Marine. Item F. A resolution expressing the Plaquemines Parish Council's support of the construction of a floodgate in Myrtle Grove instead of a wraparound levy as proposed by U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, authorizing and directing the parish president to do all things necessary and proper to formally request a cost estimate from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers for a floodgate, and authorizing and directing the parish president to seek the state of Louisiana's support through the CPRA and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. I offer for, for discussion. Um, seconded by Mr. Roussel, Mr. Lawrence. Yes, Warren Lawrence, 120, Timber Canal Lane, Middle Grove. Uh, this uh, resolution was actually requested by uh, Mr. Wagner from the Corps of Engineers. We had a meeting between Mr. Lapine, members of the uh, association, with him and uh, including Mr. LaFrance. And he's asked that in the past, the past councils has asked the same thing in a resolution and never went forth. This resolution is only to ask to update the price that they did in 2011 on what it would be to actually put the floodgate in. It's not asking for any money, it's asking to go forth. He said if we got the support of the current council, the they would go ahead and price what it would be. Where we would get the money to actually do it, we can't even approach until we know what that cost is. What we have recognized and what we wanted to bring forth was that by putting the wrap around, we already seen just with this Hurricane Barry, the damages that are done to your infrastructure in our subdivision and will continually be done from now on if they wrap around a levy around us. So it was brought forth to say, well, what is the cost in today's world to actually compare the wraparound to the floodgate? He has agreed, and I think maybe Mr. Lapine can bring forth on this, but that he will divert the starting of the levy. This will do not delay anything. He will start at the shooting range and come toward Myrtle Grove, which will give more time to work out if we can get financing or funding to do this. It may be an effort, a useless effort, but at least it's an effort to go forth to see what was the cost would be today. The cost in 2009 was $11.4 million. We don't know what the cost is today. I did talk to Mr. Wagner Monday. He said he has gotten all the information back from Julie LeBlanc, who with the Corps of Engineers who had his job previously, he's got that information in on how she came to that cost and he will proceed to go ahead and give a cost. Also in this, we're asking that the CPRA, which is also 25% of that sponsor, to come forth and also endorse, you know, just to get this price on here to look at what it would cost to do it. It is not anything to pass to say, it's going to be done. It's a cost factor of where we can go from here, where we can solicit. We have contacted our state, our federal senators and representatives to see if there's any money available 
to help out in doing this. The, all the answers come back is how much you need, and we don't know what we need. This resolution is simply, as I understand it, to put forth the effort. All the, and I know Mr. Gouy and Mr. Lapine warned previous councils that approved the same resolution that we got the past estimated costs in the past. They want something from the current council asking if they agree. And that's basically the way I understood it. Mr. President. Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Um, you paid attention in the meeting, so thank you very much. So uh, the meeting um, that we had with Kevin Wagner, uh, you accurate on every statement. Uh, Kevin did ask for a resolution accompanying this. Uh, and as I said that day to Kevin Wagner, as I stated to you today, my concern was if it would delay the project. Right. The words from Kevin Wagner will, said they will not delay the project. That is so correct. That is correct. Um, I, that was my main concern, and I, I didn't want any language in this resolution. We support a um, uh, 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 final number, as we say, on the on the floodgate and put it to rest or whatever we go from there. But our biggest concern in the administration is that it would not slow any process of levy work done. He is working backwards from the shooting range back up to Myrtle Grove. So that that was the most important thing that was uh, uh, our concern. So uh, that was given, uh, again, Mr. Lawrence was in the room. That was a very accurate coming from the core itself. So uh, we'll support this resolution as is, and we'll wait to get the information to Mr. Wagner. When we do, we'll present another meeting with you and Mr. LaFrance and get, get you all in the same room again. Mr. Blake. Sure. So, I mean, there's a couple of things. I mean, we definitely want to support support your community. I know y'all are paying more than two hundred thousand dollars a year in tax revenue to the parish, um, and we want to save on on just to keep our uh, infrastructure from being uh, further impacted. Um, and just to kind of get some hardship off y'all's back. You know, the the neighborhood. You know, it doesn't take much for it to flood. Um, I'm hoping that CPRA can can get out a little bit ahead of some of the impacts from Mid-Barataria and anything that they would need to do to mitigate those impacts maybe could go into getting exactly what the community wants and has repeatedly asked for, which is a floodgate. Um, I think that there can be some innovative designs that get the cost down. Something doesn't have to exactly be built on site, but it could be built in a shipyard elsewhere to where you don't have to go 40 miles down the road to get a hammer, you know? Right. Um, and so maybe we can get what y'all need at a you know, at a better cost, since there is going to be uh, the big protection levy behind y'all. Maybe, maybe there could be some relief for a good price. And, and I could go into that, that they are looking at some other areas in Lafouche, how they have built other floodgates or flood control structures and everything that CPRA has agreed to look at and the Corps has agreed to look at. We have not gotten any reports back on any of these structures some of them are floating structures, like you said, some are not a bona fide floodgate. The floodgate that was used in the pricing in 09 was the same floodgate as is installed at Captain Lowry's. Mm. So that floodgate was the uh, design or object that they used to price it in 2009. So what the price on using that is a stop law gate. It is not a hydraulically operated gate. Now, there is some, some concerns from the parish on operating a stop law gate in reverse to a hydraulically operated and opening and closing gate. So, but we, we, we went back to the core and in 09, they use that particular gate as the object. We don't care what floodgate they use in the design to try to do the, the purpose. We just know that the infrastructure that's in this subdivision is your infrastructure and our infrastructure. We know that if we're wrapped, what has happened in Barry will happen every time there's a hurricane or tropical event. It will damage it. It has not been repaired since Isaac. There's still damaged streets. Barry is still in concern. We don't know, uh, unless Mr. Lapine knows, we didn't even have the figures on how much damage was done in the little hurricane. Well, some people didn't think it was little, but the hurricane of Barry, there was substantial done, damages done in that subdivision to the streets. They have not been repaired. The parish doesn't have the money to repair them. They are shelled. 
how long they were this repaired shell streets repaired I invited all of you to come look but since it goes back for seven years now we've had street damage drain damage and everything it's just going to get worse and this is just a step to say what is the price and can we go forward we have solicited from people to help finance this we can't finance it you can't finance it the state has offered through CPRA to try to look at financing, but we don't know the answer to how much we need financed unless we go forth with this. I just want to say my office, uh, my assistant, Ms. Uh, Ms. Antoine, we had contacted Terrebonne Parish, and Terrebonne Parish had built eight floodgates, all of them are different. Yes. Mr. Goy, Dr. Goy. Yeah, um Marshall, there's a couple of things that we really need to be aware of. One is, what is the cost going to be to not do it? Well, it's exactly and, right. Yeah, and, and it also, uh, you know how the lots are now. There's been kind of a lull in uh, new development, and I think that's going to get even worse with the potential flooding and the, the diversion, yes. potential flooding, and the, even a couple of weeks ago with the high water that came out of nowhere. Uh, I think that if this is done, it opens the door for future expansion. And it's limitless as to the waterfront lots that, that can be expanded off of the canal as it is. It's not going to happen if something's not done to, to kind of hold that water. So um, those are some points I think we ought to continue to emphasize when they're doing this cost analysis, is what's it going to cost if we don't do it? And if I may add one thing, we have, and I have to thank Mr. Lapine, at least he's opened the door to listen. We have offered actually to come in and do prototypes on our drainage, to actually go in and make repairs at our cost, to see a different way to do it. We've run into some roadblocks on that. If we clean the lines out, they're afraid the lines are going to collapse. So we offered to clean the lines out and video them, but they said if we do that, the line might be collapsed, and then the parish would be on hook to replace the lines, the drain lines. We wanted to do one drain line as a prototype. And, it, you know, we offered even, we got prices on doing re-asphalting the patches in the street, $16,000 we were going to come up and do. We got prices for three inches of asphalt. They tell us we need six inches of asphalt. And we can't do a public street, although the current street is three inches. So it's it's problem. We are working with the administration. I've got to say, there's been the most open door, and I'm not trying to butter him up, but that we have ever had to actually come down and look at us, talk to us, sit down. And that's why I ask every one of you to come down and show what we're want to open doors, the economic impact, this parish wants economic impact. There's only 63 homes and over 200 lots. And that develops over, in our subdivision loan, phase one, it develops $250,000 a year to this parish in money that is brought into this parish. If it was fully developed, it would be a million dollars on our side. And it's not going because people are afraid to come in. You want to invest in the future of this parish, and this, this I feel, and I'm old, I'm going to be dying, my kids will have this, but they are going to be looking at revenue that will not fluctuate so much when the oil prices go down. Property values will probably stay more in the stable range. We're looking at areas that I feel if LNG comes in, if all these places come in, you're going to see people looking to buy houses who work in them areas. They're going to come into our subdivision, we hope, and build and put money in the coffers of this parish. I don't want to go any further, so. Thank you. Um, one quick, Mr. LaFerrance. Mr. Um, President. You know, eight years, Mr. Um, Lawrence, I sat up there on the council, and I used to dread when you came, but I really like when you're coming now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh -huh. That like a no, but th I, honestly, thank you. And when the meeting occurs, we'll have everything set up, and we welcome the input again. That's, that sounds like you're getting a steak dinner tonight. <laughs> One more thing, Mr. Mr. Blank. Sure. 
So while this council didn't approve approve that neighborhood, um, we definitely need to be aware when we do approve new development to make sure we're using common sense um, that that neighborhood was built like a Walmart sack, just enough to get kind of get people in the door. It, it can't handle high tide, that kind of thing. And we just need to think about those things uh, as we move forward. We need to you know approve infrastructure that doesn't corrode, for instance, concrete culverts or plastic culverts, things like that that will hold, will stand the test of time in a place that we, we know is going to flood. Thank you. So I so offered, item F, that's for a second. Seconded by Mr. Roussel. Is there any question from the table? Any questions or comments from the audience? Machines are open. Uh, Dimitri, Sled Boy, who would have thought you and I would have a final line? And the measure passes 8 0. Item K. A resolution relative to the directing. The, par the president to make grant application for funding to replace the oh. asbestos waterline between White Ditch and Braithwaite to Phoenix and to provide for related matters. Offer. We have a motion by Mr. Bartholomew. Second. Seconded by Mr. Roussel. <laughs> Any comments from the table? Audience? Machines are open. And the measure passes 8 0. Item I. May I read it first? <laughs> a resolution to cancel the November 28, 2019, and December 26, 2019 <clears throat> regularly scheduled council meetings due to the Thanksgiving holiday and the Christmas holiday and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Hello, an extra unanimous second. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Unanimous well, second. Unanimous second. Do have a question? Any, any question from the table? Audience? Machines are open. Message carry eight zero. L, I mean J, in ordinance to amend the 2019 general fund operating expenditure budget, legal services department, and the economic development tourism department, and otherwise to file with respect thereto. I offer with changes. On line four, 7,500. Line six, 7,500. There's also another change on line four. We're removing civil service case and we're replacing that with Tammy Bradley versus Plaquemines Parish Government Civil Service Docket Number 19-001. And also offer. Also in line 17 and 23, the amount is $7,500. And also offer. Okay. Seconded by Ms. Newberry. Any questions or comments from the table? Audience, machines are open. And the measure passes 8 0. M. In ordinance to amend the five year capital improvements plan, drainage, pump, repairs project, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. We have a motion by Mr. Bartholomew. We just um, amend the funding source from uh, fund balance de um, designated for emergencies to the BP fund. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm going to need to change the voting rules for three fourths. We need three fourths of the council to vote for it to pass instead of a regular. So that's I'm BP sorry, fund. Two thirds. I'm two -thirds. sorry. I misspoke. Yeah, well, I think we'll get two thirds. Okay. Let's move. 
you want to just okay. vote like with those okay. with those changes. We have a motion by Mr. Bartholomew. Second. Seconded by Mr. Albro. Any questions from the table? Audience? Machines are open. Oh, it didn't show yours for some reason. We have a verbal? Oh, yes. Okay, the measure carries. Yeah, and blink. He's absent. Seven. And Six, Ms. Yeah, seven Mr. Blank seven. not here. Seven zero. And a resolution electing the chairperson of the Plax Parish Council for the year 2020 and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. On offer. Mr. Conovich. I called him of France. We have a motion by Mr. Conovich. Second. Seconded by Ms. Newberry. Any questions from the table? Any questions from the audience? Machines are open. And the measure carries eight zero. I wanna I wanna thank every uh, council chair uh, Council person for the vote of confidence. Uh, I'll try to run this seat as professional as possible. Thank you. Oh, an ordinance to amend the 2019 <coughs> public health fund operating expenditure budget, health department, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. We have a motion by Ms. Newberry. I'll offer. Second. Seconded by Mr. Conovich. Ms. Newberry. Yeah, um, this 25000 we have to um, take out the budget, but um, we're going to get it right back from the grant that was um, given to the parish. Um, we asked the state to, we asked the state if we could bill them directly. They disapproved that, so they wanted us to do it this way. So I said a turnaround time to get out the money is within 30, hopefully 30 days, um, but that's what this is about. It's from the grant money. We just have to do Any questions from the table? Uh, is this enough? Uh, yeah, I talked to um, to Raymond, and this was enough. He said. Okay, because we got what we got seventy five. Yeah, eight. but we have um, two sprays. We're gonna have a spray in the spring. So we're gonna come back and do this in the spring. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the table? Audience, machines are open. Measure pass eight zero. P, an ordinance to amend the 2019 Library Services Fund operating expenditure budget, library's general department, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. $15,005. We have a motion by Mr. Albro. Second. Seconded by Ms. Newberry. Any questions from the table? Audience, machines are open. Measure pass eight zero. Q, a resolution approving an agreement with the South Central Planning and Development Commission for Ascension, Assumption, Iberia, Iberville, Jefferson, Plaquemines, Lafouche, Orleans, Point Coupe, St. Charles, St. James, St. John the Baptist, St. Martin, St. Mary, Terrebonne, West Baton Rouge, for the purposes of applying for a grant funding and acting in support of watershed region management activities and in conjunction with the State of Louisiana Watershed Initiative. We have a motion by Mr. Blank. Seconded by Mr. Conovich. Any questions from the table? Yeah, um, what kind of, you know how much the grant possibly is for, just out of curiosity? It really, it could be a number of grants. Um, it, it really could be anything. And the, the, this is to, um, because of the, the big floods that happened in Baton Rouge, well, around the state in 2006, what was happening is people tend to manage water within parish boundaries, and, and water, I mean, just wants to roll downhill. So this would uh, help set up a, just a more common sense approach uh, to flood prevention and things like that. It's not just coastal stuff, but also some inland rivers and things like that, too. Any more questions from the table? 
audience, machines is open. And the measure carry eight zero. R, a resolution electing the vice chairperson of the Plaxus Parish Council for the year 2020 and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Mr. Blank. I'd like to offer with uh, Mark Cognovich in the blank. We have a motion by Mr. Blank, seconded by, Me. by Mr. Roussel. Is there any questions from the table? You try to roll. Any questions from, from the audience? Machines is open. Statements. Mesa Carry 8 0. S. A resolution relative to directing the, pa the president to investigate the feasibility of using Diamond Park as a location for housing, workers involved in the construction of the Venture Global Plant, directing the president to make a report to the council on such feasibility and to pro provide for related matters. I so often. Second. Second. Seconded by Ms. Newberry. Any question from the table? Audience, machines are open. Measure carry eight zero. You, a resolution approving an agreement with Regional Planning Commission for Jefferson Orleans, Plaquemine, St. Bernard, St. Charles, St. John the Baptist, St. Tammany, and Tangipahoa parishes for the purpose of applying for grant funding and acting in support of watershed region management activities and in conjunction with the State of Louisiana Watershed Initiative. We have a motion by Mr. Blank. Seconded by Mr. Conovich. Mr. Blank. This is just for the other side of the river. The same, uh, same deal. Any questions from the table? Audience, machines are open. And the measure passes 8-0. 10B, District 1 Update, Councilmember Bartholomew. Time to go. We appreciate that. Time to go. Next item. 10C, District 9 Update, Councilmember Kognovich. I'm going to boat hall ball talk to John Helmers when he gets back, and we did the fort already. Thank you. Item F. I'd like to talk about Highway 11 repairs. I think we have a, about $125,000 in the budget for the, the southern end of the parish. And um, I don't think it's been utilized for road repairs. And there's a couple of uh, pretty dangerous spots. And I was wondering if, if there's going to be, um, if that funding was going to be utilized before the end of the we we do have a project coming up that is going to be that is going to address the issues on Highway 11. Engineering department uh, has already been down there and marked some of the bad spots. Jonah Arsenault will be down there next week. He's going to measure off the, the uh, all of the spots that need repairs, put the project together, and by mid-December we'll have packets available to request quotes to uh, repair those sections of Highway 11 that are bad and that are in need of repair. Got it. So th this current funding will carry over? I mean, we, we will be able to use this current funding as well as anything that's been allocated for next year? Yes. Got it. Okay. Thank you all very, very much. There's um, sort of a grass efforts, root, uh, grassroots effort going down there. There's, I mean, folks are signing a petition to get that, that those issues addressed. I just wanted to I, I oh, drove no, it last week. I, 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 we know where the spots are. They're they're working on it right now. Like I said, he'll be down there, measuring, remeasuring because he's already done it once. Mm -hmm. He's going to remeasure all the spots that are bad, and he's going to put the proposal together. And by mid December, we'll be asking for quotes. Thank y'all very very much. And the, the other the other item here is um, the pumping station repair update. Um, God, hold the ferry. Man. Pump station repair update. I miss it. Pump station repair update. We just repaired pump at uh, 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 points of left. Mm -hmm. We took a old uh, gear pump from the old Murder Grove pump station and put it on one of on the points of left. They cranked it up. It's working fine. The other pumps we have Bellevue, which of course we just y'all just voted on it, which to use the money on the. 
BP to repair the same thing on Bellevue, which is in Point Lahash, Grand Liard in Triumph, and the Ollie Pump Station. Each one of those have have uh, the chain-driven gearboxes that need mm -hmm. to be repaired. So as soon as we get that, we'll start working on that. And uh, a couple other pumps have a little minor repairs. Mm -hmm. We go through. Scott, do you think any um, any of the substantially reduced, uh, you know, the, the pumps that have a lot of capacity that's been, that have been reduced, do you think substantial repairs will be made um, in time for, um, you know, after the spring when it begins to rain a whole lot? Hopefully it, it, it works out good, you know. We should have every pump running at that mm -hmm. point. Okay. Uh, if we don't have nothing else go down, but uh, they're working at it and... Of course, we got scars there. Which they're doing some major repairs on, mm -hmm. on lifting the motors and stuff up, the pumps up on that one. They're going to take one down at a time. So you have three others, and they have mm -hmm. four different motors. So as soon as they raise one, then they'll start the other one. Then they'll raise it, and then you'll have, you know, you'll have one down, three up. Got and it. it'll continue on like that. Uh, thank you very much for working behind the scenes to get all those up. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you all. Uh, could you let us know what did we find out about the warranty on the pump stations, uh, Myrtle Grove? Uh, they still working with that, but uh, we we actually have one pump running. Two of them they don't want to run at all, but one of them we can run if we need it on a heavy emergency. And the money is up at the core, up in Memphis. So they, as soon as they approve it and it comes back down, they'll be repairing those pumps. So it's still under warranty? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Item 11. Well, Approval of the minutes from the October 24, 2019 meeting. We have a motion by Mr. Roussel, seconded by Mr. Gooey. Still can't get it. She's open. Councilmember Blinken Cognovich. So Todd, hold the ferry. And the measure passes 8-0. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion seconded by Mr. Roussel. Machines are open. Measure passes 8-0. We have adjournment at 5.01 p.m.